since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. In the name of Jesus, our one Lord and Savior, let us worship God. by a great cloud of great people. Many of us, myself included, come to All Saints with tears. We also come with celebration because on this day, I know that people I love so much are here with us, amen? And people you love so much are here with us. Because of that grace, we dare to come before God and confess our sins. Let us confess our sins together. 
Eternal God, in every age, you have raised up women and men to live and die in faith. Forgive our indifference to your will. You have commanded us to speak, but we have been silent. You have called us to do what is just, but we have been fearful. Have mercy on us, your faithless servants. Keep before us faithful people for us to follow, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we may grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. In faith and hope, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Every person who comes before God, confessing their sins, is forgiven, will be forgiven. This is very, very, very good news. The best news there is. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hi, Ed and I are here on behalf of the Worship Committee and their Stewardship Minute and promise we won't be more than 60 seconds. Amen. Our choirs and music programs and worship team are made up of all sorts of people. Yes, people with colorful ideas like yours, Ed. See? And people with wonderful, interesting ideas like you, Bruce. But whatever our differences, we come together to focus on the praise and worship of God. So here we encourage all of you, all of you out there, to join in. And all of you who are watching us. And or even sing. You got to sing, Bruce. <laughs> together we sing. And no matter how you think. Mm, or even sing. You are welcome to join our choir. Or one of the bell choirs or children's choirs, if you're the right age. And come to our concerts, which help support our mission, like the duo organ concert, which Brent and his mentor raised over $1,200 for city mission. Amen. Or you could join the worship committee and help out with our beautiful seasonal decorations as we change from season to season throughout the church year. So, so, whoever you, you are, come, sing, shout, and worship, worship, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. 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 Watch your step. Yeah. Yeah. I would invite Nick Coleman um, to come forward and, and share what's been going on in our nursery rooms downstairs. On 
March 14, 2015, my life was changed forever when my sister Allison passed away unexpectedly. Through the generosity of many people, a fund was established to be used in the nursery and crib room. As I searched for ideas to fulfill my Eagle Scout project, I decided that renovating the nursery would be a great way to pay tribute to my sister and her love of children. This summer, the walls were painted, new carpet and lighting were installed, and new window valances were hung. As a result, a sense of new life has been brought to the room. I would like to thank everyone who helped and supported me along the way. And in honor of that, uh, we'd love for you to join us in a prayer of dedication for those, prayer, for those nursery rooms, which is in your bulletin. Let us pray together, saying, Holy God, we thank you for the gift of children and the wonder they bring to our common life of faith. We dedicate this new crib room to you, faithful God, that through our nurture and example, our children may be drawn to praise and serve you in this place and throughout their lives. Amen. After the congregational meeting today, we invite you to journey down to the first floor um, and see that room as we will be having an open house. To prepare our hearts for the hearing of God's word, let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word. Grant us grace to follow those who have gone before us in lives of faith and commitment that we with them may know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. May we follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Listen now to a reading from Ephesians 1, verses 11 through 23. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward rege redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his right hand, at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and, and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I would now invite the children to come forward and join me around this table. We're not going to sit this morning. Come on up. You, you don't have to sit this morning. We're going to come look what's up here on the table. Come on up. Ooh, pretty neat stuff in there, huh? What do you see? Do you see bread? What else? Yeah, what else do you see? What's in here? Can you look? Uh, a drink. It's a drink, yeah. It's grape juice. Do you like grape juice? I do. Yeah, okay. Well, who do you see around this table right now? I see, what's your name, bud? Uh, Hank. Hank. And what's your name, sweets? I'm Addison. Addison, and you are? Nathan, and I see Pastor Cynthia, and I see me. Okay. Would you believe it if I told you that when we take communion later today, that there are lots of other people around this table that maybe we can't see? I know, it's a little bit crazy, but here is the wonderful thing about God and about what happens when we take communion. Not only do we remember that Jesus died for us and that he rose from the grave, but we also remember the power of God in that all the people who have come before us, as well as the people who will be born, are with us at this table. Isn't that kind of mysterious? Yeah. I know. Faith is kind of mysterious, but it also is amazing. So we give thanks today for God and God's power in our world and the ability for people to follow God and to follow Jesus as their Savior. So will you pray with me? Can we grab hands? You want to come over here, Cynthia? <clears throat> Let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your power. Thank you for your power. For the mystery of faith. For the mystery of faith. Where we know all of your people gather together. Where we know all of your people gather together. Amen. Amen. All right. Do you all want to go down with Miss Niemeyer downstairs? And we'll see you in a little bit when we get to eat the bread and drink the cup. So I don't know about you, but for me, this morning, it was a yearning, I came to work with a yearning to get out of the madness that is out there. Because <laughs> it's a little bit crazy out there right now. We've got hostility, we've got polarization, we've got one neighbor's sign pit against another. We've got a society with huge economic gaps. We've got glass ceilings. We've got fear of people who are different from us and responses to that fear. And we have, well, plenty of other issues that would be silly to name, like the annoyance of early Christmas shopping. But I think we all get the picture. There's a lot of absurdity out there. It's almost like one of our primetime shows has come to reality, and we're paralyzed by it. Yet in here, this day and every day, we're supposed to be telling and creating a different narrative. A narrative that echoes the words that we find in the letter written to the church at Ephesus this morning. One that claims that our identity be, be found in the unity of Christ, as those who live intentionally, searching to find ways to praise God with our daily living. Here, with one another, with the community of the saints, with the holy, with others who claim God and Jesus Christ and believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, here it's supposed to be different. The eyes of our hearts are to be enlightened to know the hope that we have as those created and love and able to know, as the text says, the immeasurable power that we have 
simply because we name Jesus as our Lord and Savior and have power through the Spirit to create unity, peace, and experience joy. We are the saints. It's the most used term for followers of Jesus Christ in the New Testament, the saints. The term saints asserts unity because we cannot be a saint apart from the community from where the saints dwell. I want you to take a look at this cross this morning with the circle around it. Yes, it can stand for, you know, Jesus dying on the cross and the circle power of unending power of God. But I want you to think about it a little bit different this morning. I want you to think about how there are the saints above and the saints below. And then there are the saints that are with us that we can see. And I want you to see it as all joined in one in the unity of the body of Christ. All of us are here together through the power of God and the promises of love and forgiveness of Jesus Christ. We are those whose inheritance is that love and that forgiveness, a race that has already been won, a hope that is already here. Today and every day, we are in the company of so many who have made this journey, who have struggled to find God in the world, in this nation, in this community, and in this church. So here we are, this morning, remembering some of those who are near and dear to our hearts, thanking God that they are still with us, yet have joined those who have gone before and able to be for that which we, we, we earn, which is to be whole, unburdened, and free. That is the story we tell. That is the story of the saints. The author of Ephesians prays that the saints there in Ephesus would have wisdom and revelation to see God moving, and that the eyes of their hearts would be enlightened, that they would know the hope to which they have been called and be empowered to grasp it. A celebration today is not only simply to remember those who have gone before, but to allow them in our midst to point us to a future that they already have access to, a future that eliminates polarization, that embraces harmony, a future that is not guided by division or hostility, but of love and forgiveness. It may prove difficult to feel empowered by a God whose victory was not on a king's throne, but on a convict's cross. That road that we as saints walk to, where power is not found in dominance, but rather is found in sacrifice. That is the narrative we tell, and that is the narrative we need to believe that we have an inheritance of God's love and God's forgiveness. But we've got to believe it. One of our greatest mistakes, I believe, as people of faith since the Enlightenment has been able to locate all truth in that which we can reason and articulate with words. But we don't need to just believe it up here we need to believe it in here. In the Hebrew worldview, there wasn't this differentiation between the heart and the mind like we find in our world today, like Paul talked a lot about in the New Testament with the Greek worldview. There wasn't this separation. The mind and the heart, all of it was integrated into one place. It was both reason and emotion rational thinking, and at the same time was without words. That was the author's prayer, that all of us who claim to be saints would see, would know and hear and feel the hope to which we have been called. 
We'll say in a few minutes something we say each communion liturgy, which is, this is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. To see with the eyes of our heart is to see both with reason but also with mystery. It's trusting that the power of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of God in the world is not necessarily to be known in the way in which we know an algebra equation. That is Paul's prayer for the church. That through the eyes of our hearts as whole people, we would be able to live and to tell the story of love and forgiveness and hope in the life to come. Now that is a little bit more easy just to say. But many of us here come today with broken relationships with a spouse, a parent, a friend. All of us live in a broken political system. Many of us yearn for loved ones to be healed from pain and disease. Yet our call as the saints is that we would be a people who through our unity can witness to the inheritance that is ours through our baptisms, that God claims us, God loves us, and our lives are simply, simply to be a response to that. That we would know the hope to which we have been called, the riches of God's inheritance, and the immeasurable greatness of God's power for us. In other words, we would approach the voting booth, the grocery store, any board meeting, the dinner table, with the power of God in Jesus Christ, with our eyes enlightened to the loving forgivingness of our faith and to be empowered by the presence of the Spirit here and now to live that narrative which we proclaim. So take it for what it's worth today. We are always surrounded by the saints and each of us is a part of this story and are called to persevere as those saints. A story that is mandated to live in unity and called to love and forgiveness because of the immeasurable greatness of the Holy Spirit's power. It is up to each of us how much we want to be a part of that narrative and how much we want to be claimed by it. Just as the author of Ephesians prayed for the saints there, acknowledging the hard pieces, the very hard pieces of this road of faith we journey on, so to this day, let us pray for one another. May we pray that God would so enlighten all of us with the eyes of our hearts that we would be open and telling of God's love, of forgiveness, and be known through our unity in service and praise to our God. Amen.
and God loves. Let us respond with faith and hope and with our gifts of financial resources for the work of the church.
We seek not to be saints so much, but simply your people. We have been blessed beyond imagination and so pray as we offer these gifts that they would be used to touch the lives of the broken, the lonely, the seeking, the hungry, the hopeless, all those who are our brothers and sisters. Amen. Friends, this morning we share this meal and this table with the whole communion of saints. Christians on the other side of the globe are sharing this meal with us. Those not yet born who one day will learn of God's love for them, they are sharing this meal with us. Those who have died and gone before us are sharing this meal with us. I invite you to listen to the role of the saints those who have been named in this congregation and friends and family of those who have died and are now, ne- now raised with Christ. Alice Thomas. Eric Ramlo. Jean Tischler. John R. Blyde. A. Kenneth Galt. Kathy Faye Myers. David Paul Slick. Francis Van Wielden. Janet Kratzer. Thomas McCleave. Lyle Feller. Audrey C. Galt. Earl Wells. Lois Myrise. Carl Beck. Phyllis Phillips. Mary Howard. Marianne Younger. Joe Crawley. Edward Rhodes. Eleanor Jean Slick Wade. Virginia Keller. Joanne Reeds. Betty Ronder. Felix Gobel Komala. People of God, we remember others. We remember the saints of all of our lives, those who taught us grace, those who gave us love, those who showed us what it means to live lives of faith. For all the saints, we give thanks to God. Amen. Amen. And as we gather around this table with all of the saints, I invite you to join me in the responsive invitation to the table. We gather at this table, at God's table. The The table table that that was set long before we were born. 
There are places for all who have gone before us. We take their hands as we approach to be received by Christ around the table of welcome. All are welcome at this table, at Christ's table. God is present with us. healing, and a restoration. This is the table for all the saints of God. Come, for all things are ready. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. At your table, O God, we receive the gift of bread and cup, these are the signs and symbols you provide that remind us of your love. We thank you, almighty God, for creating the gift of life for the power and cleansing reality of water and love. In ages past, you warned us through your prophets of the broken and destructive forces on the earth, but promised us that your kingdom would belong to all who yearned for its presence. Therefore, with Christians everywhere, here and in eternity, we forever sing to the glory of your name. Jesus Christ, you have given us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, enlightening the eyes of our hearts to see beyond the struggle of this life to the resurrection of all your people. When the hungry will feast and the mourners will laugh, when the sick will be healed and all will embody the fullness of Christ who offers all people grace and peace. It is at this table where we know Jesus' faithfulness in saving us. For every time we eat the bread, our brokenness is made whole. Every time we drink from the cup, we receive unceasing grace. Every time we come to this table, we know the mystery of faith. your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this cup. Grant that we, may re that we may rejoice in the holy men and women of every time and place, and with them know your forgiveness and love and grow in grace as we advance in years and offer that freedom to others. We pray this in the strong name of the one we worship, God in community, holy in one. Let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to them. And he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat it, do it in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took a cup after supper. And when he had blessed it, he gave it to them. And he said, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the remission of sins. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. In this church, we celebrate an open communion. All those who trust in Jesus Christ are welcome at this table. We will be partaking today by intinction. There will be four stations on the floor, and they will be passing elements in the balcony. You will be encouraged and invited to come to one of the stations. There will be two in the front, two in the back. If gluten is a problem for you, we very much encourage you to come to this station right in front of the lectern. They will have gluten-free elements and a clean cup for people for whom gluten is a problem. Friends, this is the table of our Lord. Let us come and feast together.
question for you, Maureen. Best blood check for you, Dick. Please join me in the prayer after communion. We pray together saying, When, when this world passes away and, and time has come to an event, when we come to gather around the table in your kingdom of grace, may you be able to say to all of us, Well done, good and faithful servants. We thank you for your grace, O Christ that makes it so. Amen. Amen.
People of God, as God has reconciled us to him and to one another, let us pass the peace of Christ, saying the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. And go out into the world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.